thing rolled into this sort of stand on top. Oh. Okay, this is the Green Bay Public Art Commission. Today is Wednesday, April 25th, 2018. It is 8 o'clock. We are in City Hall room 310. Um, we're running a roll call here. Member Ken Tutcherson, I'm here. Alex Zacharias. Present. Randy Scannell. Here. Matt Buchanan. Here. And Tiffany Bowles. Present. Okay. Uh, liaisons, uh, Stacey Minx. Here. Beth Lemke. Here. And Lee Clements. Present. Great. Full crew. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda for today? So moved. Second. So good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there a move to a motion to approve the minutes uh, from March motion 28th? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Very good. Um, let's jump right into our new business then. Are we ready for this? Yeah. So, item number one, Green Bay Packers Plaza and Capstone Project presentation by Daniel Rorty and his class. Rorty. And the University of Wisconsin Green Bay environmental design students who are all here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yep. It's all of you. Is it, has anything changed? Have you guys upgraded or anything or updated this project a little bit? So, so. Okay. <laughs> cool. That's good. Um, motion to open the floor. We've had a motion to open the floor. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Okay. So, um, looks like we're getting things digitized over here. Is there anything that you want to say on the front end or introduce the project? Anybody want to? <laughs> So this is the Public Arts Commission. Are you guys familiar with what we do? And have any questions for us before you present? <laughs> <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, is the commission all familiar with what this presentation is about? Okay. I could use a little background. Sure. Um, anybody want to just talk briefly about what you guys were uh, supposed to do for this project and where the project is taking place? Um, well, the Packer Plaza is uh, a 6,000 square foot kind of like concrete area right outside the KI Center. Um, and essentially we got kind of free reign to kind of do whatever we wanted with it to just kind of make it more of a attraction or something that people would want to go to or see. So. And um, <laughs> have you guys started construction yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite that far. You could put a model. We have a speaker with us. Yeah. So apparently we need to have them announce their names. Names. Oh. Or the agenda oh, yeah, for yeah, the record. Address. Okay, so um, yeah. each one of you starting on this side going over, can you please state your names and address, please, for our records? Okay. Um, I'm Christina Odeski. Uh Address like campus address? No, sure. home address. Well, address? if that's where she's living. Yeah, yeah, yeah where, wherever you're okay. living. Yeah. Uh, 3312 Walter Way. Very good. Andrew Moser, 1104 Nina Avenue, Walter. Okay. Moira Poole, 329 uh, North Circle Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Brianna Fisher, I don't know my address. <laughs> Okay, I'll use my short one. 6429 Lone Oak Drive, Sheboygan. Um, no one handle 3306 Thompson Court. Okay, great. Right. So, um, this is accurate? Yep. Yes. So this is the KI Center, and uh, that square area that has the uh, green borders is the uh, perspective location that these projects were designed for. Dan? Yeah. Oh, also, Dan, can you state your name and your address, please? Dan Rorty, 2529 Tool of Planning Green Bay. Power Action, sorry. Very good. Yeah, thank you for inviting us and, and having a chance to review some of the things that uh, 
we've had a chance to do over the semester. It's an interesting process. Just to highlight the environmental design studio a little bit first, um, it's set up with four semesters. And ideally, a student would start in the first semester and work their way through all four. The first semester deals more with object things, something you could hold in your hand, something that can be easily moved, product type things. That's in the fall of the year. Second semester is more architectural, rooms and buildings. That's in the spring. Third semester is environmental, urban, contextual, communicative type design. Um, and that's in the fall again. And then the capstone project, if a student uh, does stay for four semesters, gets to pick the topic that they would like to tackle. And then we find a client for them, a hypothetical client in the community. They work through their project and they'd be ready to present now. Um, May 8th is their capstone project presentation. It's a little unusual in that the studios are what they call stacked. So the first and third semesters together are actually in the same studio. And the second and fourth semester is the same. The one advantage I found from that is there's third semester students then that are taking on tasks of explaining and guiding and coaching first semester students or fourth and second, depending on which semester we're in. So that's always been, um, it's been fun to watch and observe. What you're seeing today is the project that was put together for the, the site that was just talked about, uh, Green Bay Parker Plaza, and each student team works from a design brief that gives them general guidelines as to what they're going to be doing. All of them are doing the same thing. That site was specific for everybody. And their primary focus was to create a landmark, some sort of celebration of local, regional, national institution or reflection of the city or culture or a concept. Uh, each had an individual goal that they will tell you as they go through their presentations. And then uh, secondary to that would be things to um, provide connections, links, gathering places, extensions of activity, or perhaps even, a, excuse me, a photo op is, is a possibility. Today, the four presentations, uh, the teams were fall <coughs> semester, but we were fortunate to have at least one member of each team in the spring semester. Uh, and Moira is going to kick things off. Uh, with her project, then we're going to go to what Andrew and his team did. That'll be followed by uh, Brianna, and we'll wrap it up with Noah. Part of the reason for the order is that Noah then picked that project up from the fall semester, and he's made it his capstone project. So he's had more development into his project than the other teams would have had, uh, just as a point of reference. We're going to put the map, I guess, down there on the table, or unless it can be right here, because it's going to be easier for. Yeah. I hope I don't have to orient it anymore. Um, <laughs> this is going to be good. Probably put the bridge down that. Main Street, Adams. That's the area. Mm -hmm. Part of the project, and Noah's going to have to use it for his. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, the domes are on back order. Um, they'll <laughs> probably be coming in at some point. We do have a one sheet basic there that would go up there, but we've uh, opted not to do that. Okay. So. Cool. Is it going to open? Have some legal figures. Yeah, there we go. Well, um, one of the designers has used Legos for his bus stop project. Yeah, I remember. In his yeah. fall semester. Yeah, you probably do remember that. Um, Andrew's with us today. Okay, wrong place. One more time. Here. So, timeless. Probably going to have to use the clicker. Like the mouse clicker? Like the mouse. Or the buttons. You know how to get it to full screen? By view? Yeah. Uh, 
not use the arrow keys then? The arrow keys aren't used for doing anything either. Oh. So it's Okay. Well. Yeah. 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 two main goals that we had were that we wanted to improve the sense of place and showcase the passing of time. Those were our two main goals. And with that, we kind of got to the idea of creating a, um, a sundial um, that we could put right in the space, like a huge, really big sundial that would take up the entire area and really have that really big effect. Um, we were also really inspired by the Chicago Bean, just because it's such this big art piece that people just want to go to and the really the only purpose that it has is that it's an art piece. And so we kind of wanted to pull that in, that it would be um, a place that people would want to go to to see kind of the fascination of just how large it is. Um, we also started looking at a bunch of different sundials just to see what kind of um, style we wanted to go to. Um, so these are just some of our inspirational um, pictures. We also really like the uh, flower gardens at Niagara Park, so then we wanted to kind of pull in some of that greenery. Um, it is a pretty um, concrete heavy area in that uh, part of town, so pulling in some green space would be really nice in that too. Um, some of our beginning sketches, the middle portion of the sundial is called a gnome. Um, so we had to go and try and figure out what kind of a gnome style we wanted. Uh, we had a stacking of rocks idea, we had, you know, whether it's pointed or not, um, we ended up on something kind of like this, something pointed, something kind of geometric shape, something like that. Um, for the gnome itself, it would be 35 feet tall, so a very big one. Um, we did a lot of research on how sundials actually work, and we found out that the gnome, um, in the point of the earth where we are, it would have to be facing true north, and it would also have to be um, 40, at a 45 degree angle in order for it all to work out. Um, so yeah, I think that was everything. <laughs> um, so moving forward, um, we had the other idea to keep the idea of time with this sundial was to have um, tiles, it would be tile flooring, mm -hmm. to have uh, these larger tiles that would have inscriptions of major um, notable Green Bay history events. So that way it would tie in physical time as well as the history and time of Green Bay. And there would be these granite tiles on the base of the sundial that people would walk on that would have a pattern so that way they would stand out against smaller tiles around them. Um, so in the space, it would take up, this is the um, area of the KI Center, it would take up a majority of the space. This, um, the inner, from the edge of the bench to the other side of the bench is 60 feet in diameter, plus another four foot edge space for a planter to fill in with all that greenery. So this was our first low fidelity model to give you an idea of um, kind of how the shadow would work. This was at a smaller size compared to this one. This one's at an inch equals four feet. Um, so this one, we changed it up a little bit. We have the bench going all the way down to the floor. So it goes to the floor, and then at noon, it rises up four feet. Now we understand that this would be a safety concern, that you might need a guardrail, but we see it as an aesthetic thing that we really want the wall to be higher and if you're there with your kids, you know, you, it's a safety issue, but we think that it's not extremely high that you should be watching your kids and hopefully um, you would um, be concerned for their safety and they would be acting, making smart choices. Um, but the wall wasn't a grand enough idea to just go up 28, 30 inches high to eliminate that safety guard. 
So then from around the model, we would have just this lush greenery um, behind this wall, so that way it would be inviting. You want to come in from this area, but it still gives that effect from all the way around the circle. And these gashes would not physically be there, but they are representing the elements of the sundial as the sun moves to show the different um, time. We start at noon, and then it goes straight across to like 4 p.m., but then we add it in the extra like two hours for six and six for when you get those nice sunny days in the summer and you get more sunlight compared to winter when you would only get like to like three o'clock. So our planter, these are just some options of like good Wisconsin plants that can um, last throughout winter and like be um, perennials that will come back um, but still give that color that's not just some greens and grass, like we want to really show some flowers and um, some good Wisconsin plants. So then this is kind of a mock-up of what the whole space could look like from above. You've got that planter, you've got the bench, that would be um, granite going all the way around with the gnome in the center and the tile flooring with the history inscribed on some of those larger tiles. So for lighting, um, I forgot to mention earlier, in the gnome area, it's going to say like a Green Bay GB, um, and it actually be a cutout, so then that way you could put lighting on the inside of the gnome, and then at night it would shine out through that cutout, so you get a nice effect there. We were also thinking about having lighting um, underneath the bench, kind of all the way around, just to add that nice little kind of um, uh, aspect to it, and then also you could have it like the LED strips. And then you could do color changing for like different holidays or seasons or something to that effect. Um, for our materials, the gnome itself would be like a nice stainless steel, something really durable and clean. Um, the tiles on the main floor would be kind of this nice slate, kind of um, darker black gray kind of looking thing. And then the bench itself would be a nice granite. Have you um, um, priced this at all? Just I'm curious. Not, no. No. <laughs> that was not part of it. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. 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 Um, is there anything on the bench itself <coughs> that designates time? Like, uh, is there some hash marks or anything like that? Um, yes, it could be added to be Roman numerals or um, actual numbers. Um, it could be on the top, it could be on the side. Uh, we did not make a definitive decision because of how flexible that is. Okay. So you would intend there to be some sort of... Yeah. Yes. Or at least on like the main, like, you know, noon and two or something like that, you know. On your cool. But the uh, bench, I mean, I think we have four foot high walls in Green Bay without any kind of railing. What? I mean, I, wouldn't, I didn't even think of safety. What, what kind of... Was that a problem solving or did you come across something that, that um, or there's some... There's a lot of codes um, out in the world are, okay. that most walls... Well, and, and, and the wall starts at zero yeah. and right. rises to four, to four feet, feet and yeah. then comes back down. So that's the issue. It was four feet start and stop and in the middle it would be different. But because uh, it's at zero with the set for rising sun and then rising up to its full height at noon like the sun does, it... Um, creates a different challenge than most parents. So if it did need a railing, it would just be at that highest point, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, after it crosses two feet. After it crosses two feet? Okay. The other questions? Yeah. Can, can we go back to where you show the usage of space next to the street, please? Usage of space. Like, um, you were just, yeah, that one. Thank okay. you. <laughs> so, with one of the sculptures that has been discussed in this group recently, there's been a line of sight vision corner challenge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep, yep. I see that it gets very close to what might be the curve. It, would that be a problem, or would that be where the wall is shorter? Shorter, um, right? It's shorter over there, so that wouldn't be any yeah. problem. Yeah. That was just yeah. my only question. Even at four <laughs> feet, I'm not sure if that's. In, 
issue. And, and have the to check wall with area forward, is actually this thinner line in here, and then this is actually the green space. Yeah. So your wall is slightly back farther from the curb, and then you kind of have your little like area of green around it. So thank you. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So the green area wouldn't be a radius to to be in line with the wall that would be on the the lower level. Yeah. Okay. Have you given this a name? It's called timeless. I certainly appreciate adding green to this area. It's starved um, <laughs> for any sort of green space in this part of town, just because it's you know really heavy in concrete. Also, also appreciate the color. It's kind of bland and gray over there. So. Well, it's interesting you use the word starved, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Our second presentation. Thank you.
one side there would be like green spaces with foxwoods and other local Wisconsin plants and uh, large quartz just because quartz is mined in Wisconsin quite a bit and it's nice to bring that history and then more seating. Any questions? The food trucks themselves, are you, is it your idea then that they park on Adams Street? Um, they would park actually right, right in here, like around. Ah, okay. Because that would be safer for the people. Mm -hmm. And then it, there still is room where if cars did want to come in and park, they could drive around. Mm -hmm. Why did you use brushed steel for the opening partitions? Um, not glass. Just to like kind of break out. Mm -hmm. For aesthetic. For aesthetic, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Right. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. 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 It's a cool destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives the space a really important purpose in the community. <laughs> you good? Yeah, this yours is like a bigger than the other three combined, so I just was worried it might load slow. Once again, this is too scale. Stuff in it, that's why. That's right. Okay, so um, like I said before, my name is Brianna Fisher. Um, so our project is called P4, which stands for Packer Plaza Pocket Park. So downtown Green Bay is quickly becoming a popular destination for all things local. That includes local businesses, restaurants, art galleries, not to mention events on Broadway, on Titletown Art Street. There's new housing opportunities popping up, but outside the KI Center, there's a small plot of land that holds a world of potential. Its, a loca its location is an ideal spot to put something really awesome. It's next to the river, it's in front of the KI, it's near all the action. So uh, my group decided that we wanted something that was interactive and different from what the space currently offers. So we discussed thoroughly and extensively about the possibilities of this space. As you can see in these initial sketches, we are testing out what the space could be and what we could offer in this space. Um, initially, we focused on water and green, and that was our main primary focus of what we wanted to have in this space. As I was mentioned before, there's not a lot of green space in this general area. And then we decided like, hey, let's put some art in there while we're at it. And so I made this quick Photoshop rendering when we were first still working through what we wanted in the space, just to kind of get an ideal like, image of what the space would look like with green and art in it. So our primary goal was to celebrate public art in Green Bay. And our secondary goal was to create um, the starting spot for the Fox River Sculpture Walk, otherwise the life of the river walk. So we wanted to get the community connected and involved in this project as much as we could. So having the space connected to the community was just really important to us. We wanted local organizations involved in constructing of this space, so like the Green Bay Public Arts Commission could be involved in getting the art. Um, like I said before, it would be connection to the sculpture trail, so that's you know involving the members of the community as a starting spot on the trail. And then as for green space, we could work with the Conference Center for Biodiversity, making sure we have a variety of plant life or even the Green Bay Botanical Garden. So like I said, once again, it connected to the Fox River Trail. So this is just kind of a map of how that connects. So the KI Center is very close. It's not far away from the river at all or from the trail. So it would just be right down the road. So this was our initial sketch, um, our initial finalized sketch of what we wanted the space to look like. Uh, this is a more graphic rendering of that. So the green spaces on there represent literal green space. Those circles are sculptures and those white triangles uh, represent the way the space is walked through. 
So the technical starting point of the space would be at the pillars on the east side. Uh, we wanted people walking down the street to get caught by like, oh look, what's that over there? And then they go into the space. But there's also five entry points, so you can come in from any way that you are walking. So this is what the layout and path looked like. It's changed just a smidgen since then. I took out that back square and put green space there instead. <laughs> but um, so this is how the path looks then. A little more simplified. So then this was uh, the model at its most basic level. And then here it is more actualized. So that is with a planter in the front, pillars you can see again are on the east side. And then there's the, the little shape things that are colorful. Those are 3D printed sculptures. And then there's all the green space. So just more pictures of the model. <laughs> all right, so then that gets to key features and elements that we wanted to incorporate. So this site on its own works really well as just plants and art. But there's also opportunities for other cool things we could install, um, such as an arch. So a natural arch would be something really awesome to have as it signifies a sense of arrival, a sense of passage. So then you're transported from the street into a new space. There's another image of that. Um, we really talked a lot, too, in my group about having a sort of implied wall, an implied barrier. Um, that way, if you're walking past it, you're kind of like, oh, what is, what's in there? I want to check it out. It's a sense of intrigue. Uh, there's different options for this as well. You can have a synthetic or kinetic implied wall. So these are uh, images of synthetic implied walls. They're made of plastic. Um, but you can do kinetic as well, so it makes sound, or you can do natural. I don't like flowers, but obviously that's not going to last as long <laughs> as something synthetic. And then art was obviously the other main feature of this space. So acquiring art for the space could be done in a few different ways. Uh, there could be a jury of submissions, a massive call for art. Uh, they could be commissioned or both, been through the Kohler. There's many options of getting art into the space. Um, each of the green spaces that I mentioned before, and as you can see on the model, would have art in them, art of all sizes. We want to have a variety, so whether it be evocative of nature or abstract, kind of like the life of the river has a lot more abstract, larger pieces, um, or something like this, which is large, and it would really call attention to the space as more figurative. <laughs> um, otherwise, something like these, they're much smaller, but they're evocative in nature, and kind of interesting. Um, we just wanted to make sure we could have a celebration of public art and evocative of nature and natural elements. And as a starting point for the life of the river walk, uh, we would want it to stick somewhat to the theme of the river walk, which is reflecting on historical, natural, man-made elements, the vitality of the Fox River, and the inhabitants affected by it. There's also options, too, for having like rotating art. Um, whether it be a few times a year, new sculptural pieces can be brought in. There's further potential with that as well. They can be purchased or there's a competition. And then vegetation. So as I mentioned before, this would be native plants and flowers and shrubbery. Actually, I took up places that I've been that I really enjoy. Um, like the left is in Madison and the right is in Seattle just places where they've incorporated art and vegetation that works really well. So then the meeting circle that's in the center, this is a picture of actually the MoMA garden. Um, so it's very like plain concrete, but it also has green space in it. It's a place to meet, to congregate. There would be tables there, so that way if you are at, like say, a meeting at the KI, you can come down and just hang out in a quiet green space for some time away from your meetings. And that way you can also interact with other people that are there, have a little chat, and lunch. And then for a water feature, that would be in the very back, closest to the back of the space. So it would be just something small like you would see in a residential area. Something like a little pool and water. And then as for lighting for the space, it would be um, Edison string lights across the trees that would be in the space. And then there would be lights along the pathway. And then on the right, those are images of what we'd most likely use to light the sculptures at night. 
And then this would be seating around the space itself. There's options to either go creative with your seating or just have something more plain. That's the really great thing about having a creative space is you can kind of go either way. You can either go more modern and find or you can really just push your boundaries. And that is P4. Do you have any questions for me? With the, uh, the wall, the implied walls, would that be year round or that just a summer kind of? It could be whatever. Um, so if it is synthetic, that could be year round. If it was more natural, then of course, but, yeah, the, the life of the but. object. Um, but it could be either or. It depends, I guess, on the material chosen for the implied wall. Because if it's something more light, obviously snow is going to be an impact on that. If it's something more kinetic, that can also be year round because that's usually a synthetic object. Um, so it's like wind chimes. So those would still able to Any more questions for P4? Just where were you envisioning the, the rotate, well, an idea was tossed out of rotating art in, in the design. Yeah. Where and what kind of space do you, I mean, that's been something that we've looked at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so initially we discussed having it in the center of the meeting circle, which is what the tall little blue, blue thing, thing is. Okay. Um, so that was what we had initially discussed just as a center hub essentially um, that meeting circle is about 30 feet in diameter so there's plenty of space in there for different stuff there's the ramp around the side and then steps on the other side so that way it's accessible from all always so that was our main point of rotating art it depends I guess on the size as well as there's uh, definitely an opportunity if it's a smaller one to have it right in the front right at the road so people can definitely see it the placard or something but it's very very flexible <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. southwest of Chicago so um, and I came to Green Bay to swim so having that perspective come to Green Bay I haven't been here that long and um, I don't have a lot of background with the city and a lot of things to go off of so my impressions of the city um, I got in first um, and for my capstone I'm allowed to choose sort of an issue and then tackle it and this project sort of fit my um, thought processes and things that I've experienced here. Like um, the issues that I'm addressing are there There really isn't a lot of visible and eye-catching historical sculptural installations. Um, and that surprised me because in a little bit of my research, I realized that Green Bay is one of the oldest cities in the country. Um, it's older than Chicago, it's almost as old as New York, and yet you don't see that here. You don't, you know, you don't walk downtown and see some of the things that you would see in a city like Cleveland or downtown Chicago, things like that. And then another thing is when you visit as someone who doesn't live here, you really get this strong sense of that it's just Packer land. You know, you, you everything is Packers, you got Packers on buses, you got Packers on billboards, you got Packers, you know, on your socks, on your cars, everything. You get this impression that it's just a city that is a football town, but it's more than and so that's sort of the things that I was going after. Um, my goals for this project were obviously what they said to create a public space that celebrates the city. And then I also wanted to sort of improve um, the downtown sense of place and add a structure that creates a photo op or serves as sort of a um, something that you can identify the city by. So, you know, I know the bean was brought up, but you know, you see the bean and you're like, oh, that's in Chicago. You know, I want my project to be something that you can put in a brochure for the city or, you know, on your city website. You got a little picture off to the side and you can say, oh, wow, that's neat. I wonder what's going on there. So my inspiration for this project, um, I started looking at things that sort of like the extreme trends. Um, 
in, in a lot of cities, you've got a lot of classical architecture, a lot of classical things. Um, it's timeless, it's used a lot in governmental buildings, things like libraries, other stuff. It, it, it definitely has that sense of age. Um, so I was looking at those things. I was also looking at things like the Arc de Triomphe in France because it quite literally is a gigantic sculpture that celebrates national pride. Um, so the idea of creating something that you can look at and you feel, oh wow, you know, this is Green Bay, I'm proud to live here, I'm proud to be part of this community and things like that. And then I started looking, I started shifting away sort of from those classical types of designs because, you know, it's been done and it's cool when it's old, but it's not as cool when it's new. Um, so I started looking at things that are a little more out there. And then obviously I looked at the beam, not necessarily to draw inspiration from it from a design standpoint, but because I think it has a really interesting utility in that it's it's literally a giant beam, but it's it's so iconic, you know, people go there to have lunch, people go there to take pictures, you know, if you in high school, you know, my friends go up to Chicago and you can see on Facebook or on Instagram, you know, they've got a picture next to the beam. You know, everyone's got that weird photo where they take it all distorted in the side of it, and I thought that, that that's something that the city in Green Bay lacks. It lacks something where, you know, you, you're walking downtown and you just, you just stop and take a photograph. You stop and say, oh wow, that's neat, and we don't have something that serves that purpose. So, I should have shut the head. I'll stay here. Um, some of the connections that I wanted to do, as you can see, there's sort of my working model, um, are I wanted to connect to the industry in Green Bay. So I know that we've had a large paper mill industry and there's a lot of like factory life that's gone into sort of starting the city and things like that. So my design, I wanted to connect to that and sort of, um, it has this sort of fan blade, sort of um, industrial, large, neat ge the geometric elements that I wanted to connect to, so that's there. And then in the area around it, which I'll show later, I wanted to connect to sort of this um, idea of the bay. It's a wetlands area. I wanted to you know, incorporate local flora. And then um, in terms of this site itself, connect to the city in general around it. So it's, like they said, it's near the Fox River Walk. The KI Center is a huge business center. You know, you come for a convention, you, this is right there. You can stop and eat lunch there. It's something, you know, it's a marker where businesses can come and if you go on a weekend trip, you're like, oh, wow, there's this neat thing at the KI Center. Um, so this is sort of one of the soft side sketches I started working with. As you can see, there's um, the dome in the middle. It's not small, it's pretty big. It fills the space. You've got sort of this, um, these hills and sort of cattail, pond areas around it, things like that. It's raised up a few steps from the street. And then here's sort of like a looking at it view. And then this is a um, elevation just to show that, it, you know, how far it comes up and scale relative to a person. So the dimensions of it, it's from the ground to the top of one of the peaks, it's 14 feet tall. Um, the ceiling in the center drops down to nine feet right above the um, epicenter of it, and that's because the way the ceiling is designed, it's meant to collect rainwater, and then the rainwater will funnel down it into the center and then drip into a well in the middle. So when you have, you know, when it rains, you've got this sort of natural, cool, um, organic live element that it, did make, it makes it kind of neat. Um, 40 feet across diameter. It's 100, and almost 125, six feet in circumference. Um, eight inches wide, you know, poles that go into the ground, and then there's roughly four space on the ground from pole to pole in between to walk through. So it's AD accessible and things like that. Um, Here's an aerial picture of the ceiling, just so you can sort of see that fan blade style that I went for. The hole in the middle is a little rough. And then here's another photograph of it. Any 
questions? Is there supports on the inside, or is this all going to be? So the um, I actually talked to an architect about this. The the reason it's smaller and not so huge is because one because of that, and then two, it's working sort of like a key, like a like a dome. So in the center, where all those blades meet, there's a ring, which is going to act as a keystone, so that all of the blades support each other. Are they touching anywhere else? No. And they'd be mounted into like obviously a concrete support thing. Yeah, they'd go into the ground. Yeah. So there'd just there'd be a um, container for the to catch the rainwater. Mm -hmm. Is there any other features inside? It's just um, there are a few, but like Dan said, this is currently my capstone, so it's very in process. They weren't at a point where I could show them to you. Okay. Um, I want to do sort of a floor mural that has like the history of Green Bay on it inside the space, but that I haven't gotten that mm -hmm. worked out quite okay. yet. So just to know the idea. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. 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 And anything? Any any ideas as far as maybe adding some green? Yeah, so that, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, you can see... Oh, yeah, sort of, I see that. Yep. Yeah, I didn't pay attention. I was ponds, looking at that. So, <laughs> yeah, there's some ponds, um, local flora, cattails, stuff like that, just to sort of, um, not to take away from it, but to just sort of accentuate mm -hmm. and add to yeah, the yeah. space. I think this could really pop in now, too, if you do some interesting things with lighting. Mm -hmm. The inside, shining out. Mm -hmm. I really like that you wanted to address the, the make this a Green Bay and as soon as you see it in a brochure that we know it's Green Bay, kind of like that effect that other larger cities have. And I like the repetition that you brought in from the nearby architecture and you kind of made it more modern. And I really like the angles that you have put together. The one thing I see when I see like an, more of an enclosed space, I think to myself, that people will be in there and some will be having a great time and some will be in there that have deviant behaviors. So is your material, <laughs> yeah. I know I'm one of those people, I just think about that. One of the, the materials that you're making, is it kind of resistant to graffiti? Yeah, it's a metal. Well, is anything really resistant to graffiti? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Graffiti, anything, yeah. Graffiti, anything, yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, but it's made of, it'll be made entirely of metal. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if there, I don't know if they're graffiti resistant paint, something that's, you know, very, it bonds well to metal, but it's easily washed. Um, something like that will be something I have to look into. But yeah, to your point, like public art and public spaces, we do have to keep those sorts of things in mind as far as deviant behavior and I know some of the projects we've considered here for, for public art, if there's a place for people to hide and to do things that we don't want them to do, um, that's just something we have to be mindful of. But it's a really, really cool piece. It is really nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much. So um, you're going to continue to work on your project. Yeah, I've got a few weeks left. Okay. Uh, maybe if you want to touch base like down the road and let us know your updates, that'd be cool. Okay. Are any of you guys going to continue yours? Me. Maybe. <laughs> if you do update us, let us know because this is exciting for us. I mean, there's definitely lots of public art components to this that potentially we can uh, help in some way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's keep moving right along with our agenda here. Um, yeah. Uh, can I get a motion to close the floor? Motion to close the floor. Director. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Item number two is discussed with possible action the reevaluation of the annual grant program funding match. So, um, this came about when we were discussing our uh, the frequency of applications that we were receiving and having conversations with some of the artists that are interested in our programs but are not applying uh, because they can't find a match. Um, is this something we want to reevaluate? Is this something we want to consider offering uh, at 25% match or 100% uh, grant or partial grants? Um, I think we need to reconsider doing the 50% as in, in the context of getting more applicants, getting more art in the public. We haven't seen a huge number of applications. 
Um, and that's partially because we're still new. But um, I know for a fact that lots of artists have been uh, impeded in the application process by this 50% match that we have. Uh, so what are, what are our thoughts on that? What do we want to go Can we just kind of discuss this before, though? That, I mean, they do get, if they sell the, sell the piece, we're not taking a part of that. We're other places that Well, we're, we're taking 8% of that commission on, on the, uh, so this is for the annual grant program. Not okay. the rotating arts. Ah, uh, uh, okay. The rotating arts is we right, just right, giving right, five hundred dollars. Right, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. this is for the annual grant program. Right now, the way it stands is we offer up to fifteen hundred dollars uh, to be matched. So right. if they want fifteen hundred dollars, they have to show us proof that they're getting fifteen hundred from someplace else. Right. I know the very least we should probably do a better job of letting artists know how they can match that with other programs that are available to them in this community. Mm -hmm. Like, DGBI has some funds available. I think some of the other bids might have some funds available um, for public art. So, I mean, if we can connect those dots for them so they know that you don't have to necessarily raise this yourself, you might just might have to connect you to those organizations. That's right. At the very least, we could be doing that. Mm -hmm. And is are we tied just with financial, or could it be in kind? Um, so, you know, if somebody donated fifteen hundred dollars of material service. for them, I think that that I, I don't think that's written down anywhere. But in, in, from my take, in kind, if it's evaluated at fifteen hundred dollars, that would count. So. Um, that would be another thing that we can highlight. But I think uh, the problem is we have a lot of artists who are, do great art and who want to participate in the annual grants program, um, but they just don't know the next steps. And even if we tell them you got to talk to DGBI, that's still like another process they have to get involved in um, that might put a few of our artists out of reach. So I, I definitely have, feel like we need to do that if we do decide to stay with the 50% or if we have uh, a, a percent we need to have a better, um, I don't know, network of potential yeah. matching funds. And, and possibly, um, I know for like uh, some organizations that have an educational component mm -hmm. that we would teach, you know, we would have like a workshop or mm -hmm. uh, this is how you do it kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, at that workshop, you might even invite potential partners. Um, I think that I think that's I, I, that's a hurdle for a lot of uh, um, potential projects. Is that well, how do I do it? How do I start? Uh, who do I talk to? So some kind of uh, either so other than the website, maybe uh, it can be uh, a city. You know, the city of Green Bay can offer. A, workshops sure. um, something like that. We could make a video of that workshop, you know, just so that's a resource that they go to our website, they click right. on it, and they say, oh, we have all these different resources that we can choose from. That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, maybe we think of a workshop or a workshop video or something to produce. Um, but do we want to... Uh, the numbers. Yeah. Like, we, we haven't been getting applications right. for the program. program. Right. I'd be open to making it 100% um, grant if we could identify a more sustainable way of funding mm -hmm. the program. Does that make sense? Because yeah. um, right now we don't. I mean, once we're out of money, we're out of money. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little reluctant to open it up to 100% grant until we find another funding source. Okay. <coughs> Personally. Yeah. That, that's the thing I was thinking is. All comes down to money. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to be sustainable? Mm, that's true. Yeah. And there's some ways I think that we can explore that. Um, you know, in other cities, there's uh, a one percent, one percent of a development project mm -hmm. um, that's funded through TIF. One percent of that has to be dedicated towards public art, mm -hmm. either on the site itself or it can be thrown into uh, the pot of money that the PAC. Hold on to. Yeah, so the percent for the arts, that is um, definitely something we should 
start considering and talking about how do we create an ordinance or, or you know, some something um, that will help. That definitely drives the amount of public art that happens naturally. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that would be maybe a different conversation to have. Sure. Uh, but definitely that it should be on our radar as a percent for the arts. I don't really know how to implement one of those. I've never done it, but um, <coughs> uh, cities like Portland, Madison, they have percent for the arts at some level. Matt, uh, Portland has an actual public art tax of $35 per citizen. I heard that goes <laughs> just a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's, that's a little bit far off, I think, from our scope, but I think we should start talking about a percent for the arts at some point in the near future. Um, so any other discussion on the reevaluation of annual grants? That, that makes a lot of sense that we, after, if we could re, what, so we, uh, maybe in our, our chairman coordinator's report we could talk about our uh, status of the um, fundraising cabinet. But we're definitely thinking about it and we're making action steps to acquire some more uh, long-term funding sources. And, uh, so do we wait till we have that, or do we want to talk about dropping it to 25? Well, question. Yes. Have you updated your materials from with your requirement? Not the last currently, meeting? no. I have to do that, yeah, and then upload it to the new website. Okay, so how are you marketing it? What are you doing to market that you have grant money available? I spoke, I mean, as far as branching out online. I haven't done anything, but this past week I met up with Art Colony to present on the topic and give them kind of more information on applying to the programs. Have you done any press releases or anything? Not currently, no. You should have a side conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and once you have those materials updated, send them to me. Okay. Right, yeah, okay, so we can discuss our promotional mm -hmm. uh, efforts. Great. Um, Okay, any other discussion about the reevaluation of the, so no, we're not going to take any action today, we're just going to keep thinking about it, and uh, if, if we want to bring it up on another agenda, let us know, and, like how we're feeling, because I, I think I'd be in favor of, of supporting a drop in the percentage requirement for match, uh, just to help drive more applications, and to make it more accessible to some, some people. Has there been any talk in staff about uh, changing or amending TIP to? A little bit recently, mm -hmm. but very like yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. so we're a little per, a little early on, right? But I think there's definite interest. Okay. Cool. Yes. If, if um, not as many applicants are currently trying to apply, would it be possible to increase the amount that is granted? Like instead of fifteen hundred, we go to like three thousand, yeah. and then we still offer fifty percent. Yeah, or you could do 2000 and the 25%, but just so it's a little bit more enticing. Sure. So maybe you have a like a sliding slope like a, like a Yeah, slope. or or maybe they could work harder for a, a greater amount. I'm not sure, but okay. something like that. Yeah, that's potential. Um, also, I've I've participated in grants where um, you have an annual grant program and there's a certain dollar amount allocated towards 100% grants. And then there's a certain dollar amount allocated towards 50% match or something like that. But it all functions under the annual grant program. So you're doing both. Um, and that would at least you know, get people to apply. And then if, you know, let's say we don't take A and B applicants to be 100% funded, maybe we could start helping them with the 50%. And now we have their application, we have their interest, and uh, we can help them you know, better network them with funding matches mm -hmm. with other locations and sources in the city. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think maybe at least we should consider allocating some of our funds for the annual grant program towards a 100% grant. How do we feel about that? So, how many of, because how you currently, you have the quarters, y and yeah, you're three. awarding until the pot of money runs out each quarter. Right. So how many of those grants would be awarded each quarter? So what is our, uh, do you remember what our budget is per, per quarter for the annual grants program? We have it set aside. Per third, rather. Three thousand. Three thousand. <coughs> Which would only, 
but now I think we amp that up. So I think we're giving out three grants total. Per, per third? Yes. Okay. So that'd be like nine grand. No, that'd be like 4,500. Yeah. 4,500, okay. So we have 4,500 per third. Um, we could do like half of that, or we could do a third of that. Fifteen hundred dollars and just grant money, and then three thousand to be matched. Thoughts? I guess. Thank you. I'm certainly not opposed to making this more flexible and, and changing it up so we get the money out the door. Mm -hmm. I just don't know the best way to do it. I need some money. So, you know, it's about sustainability, you know, the bottom line is yeah. sustainability. So we have, we have a system in place for sustainability, in, like, until 20, beginning of 2020, right? That's basing it off of our current, that's current not changing it, that yeah. we're increasing anything. Yeah. So we wouldn't really be increasing anything, we'd just be allocating dollars into different areas, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's also not, that's not branching out our rotating arts program any further. Oh, okay. So we, we have, we have so five. So I mean, you could branch out further in this program, I see. but then rotating arts is not going to. Sure. We're not going to get any additional pads or anything like that. Right. Okay. So, um, so you got to take off. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it would. <laughs> so, is this something we um, want to sit on for for maybe a month and and, re and bring up at our next meeting? Uh, because I, I'd like to to shake it up a little bit and see if you know yep. we can we can get try a new way to get more applicants in here. And I know for a fact that if we opened it up, we had fifteen hundred dollars allocated towards. Um, one hundred percent grant. We'd have applicants like right away. I guess it might be good to see on paper like a firm proposal. We X dollar amount and what that means um, with the pot of money we've got over time. Okay. Like, what would that mean as far as are we running out of money and if it's highly successful and we, we <coughs> dole out this uh, dollar amount. Third, you know, when when does it run out? Yeah. Okay. That sounds fair. Start, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could put together a firm proposal considering our budget for uh, for next meeting, and we can reevaluate this, this idea. Then. Could you add how you evaluate that process then with that proposal? Like, if you change from what you're currently doing, how are you going to know besides the number of applicants and how much money you're dishing out? If that process is the one that you should continue, or if you want to sure. reevaluate in the future, so what are so evaluate uh, the the change with um, like what are the methods that we evaluate the success? Yeah, and how long are we going to try this process before we see is this working, or do we need to switch it up? Sure. Well, yeah, I guess uh, that's a good part. Something to have on the front proposal for next week. Yeah. Um, I like that we're fluid. Mm -hmm. We're always trying some. Yeah. Yeah. But but you're right. We have to measure. You know. So we can have a goal want, in mind. Yeah, or you, something. If you have applicants, you want to be consistent with. Mm -hmm. So then, if they apply later in the year, they know what the process looks like if they're already funded. But if you change it, you're gonna throw them on a curve. Right. So. Okay. I want to have some more conversations with artists and talk. And you've done this. It sounds like. Like, what's keeping you from? Applying. Mm -hmm. What do we need to change yeah. in order to get you specifically to apply to this program? So yeah, if we back out and we look at the steps involved from the artist's perspective, it's first they have to apply, they have to create a project, they have to write it down, and then they have to submit it to our website, we evaluate it, and then we have to say do we want to invite them in to talk about this, and then after that uh, we can potentially grant them the money if they've gone out on their own to secure money in advance to talking to us. So they also they have to have someone committed in order for us to give them an annual grant program. They have to 
have had done all of that work already and have that money committed in, in writing. So that's what we're asking them to do. Is it just artists or the anybody? Yeah, it, so it could be anybody that has an arts, arts project. So maybe just not talk with just artists, but talk with organizations too? Sure, yeah. I've been talking with organizations. Um, I've introduced it to a few different companies. Um, and they, everyone loves the idea, but we just, we just, then there's not that action step to actually yeah. create an application. I think one small thing we could tweak to make it a little bit easier on them is maybe they don't need to have that match identified already. We'll just say, we'll give you this grant contingent upon you come up with the rest. Mm -hmm. And then they can go out to other organizations or other donors and say, hey, I've got this grant, but I need to come up with X dollar amount in order to make this project happen. Okay. If we do well, that, would we need a timeline? Would we need, I mean, probably. Yeah, but that, I mean, 24 hours. <laughs> we could do a movie. <laughs> No, but that makes more sense than the way it's currently, I think, evaluated, is that, yeah, we, so we like this. Like, we will help you if you can bring somebody to the table who's saying, I can give you as much money. Um, okay, so we could put that amendment also into the, to this proposal. Just that we need to reevaluate how we're doing the annual grants program. Right. Application. Here are some of the barriers. Okay. So we... Uh, We'll reevaluate next week after, or next month after we have a, a better proposal to look at that uh, considers our budget. Um, item number three: discussion with possible action to determine the what role the Green Bay Public Arts Commission will take in connecting artists with public art opportunities. Okay. So, Laura, did you have some ideas about this one? Um, <coughs> this is coming up because I've been contacted by um, a few artists and also just community members. So artists presenting projects um, that they have really great ideas for, but um, it uh, I've tried to funnel them towards either a rotating arts program or our annual grants program. Um, but in a case where the proposed project doesn't fit either of those, I don't want to just turn them away and be like, oh, too bad, so sad great project, but I have nothing for you. Um, on that same instance, I've had community members say, hey, I have this wall right across from my building. Like, Can we get an artist out here? This is a really great location to start something. What is going to be my role going forward as far as directing people? Um, as a person for the public arts, I feel that I should be involved somehow. I just don't know what exactly that is. Am I going out and finding artists for this person? Uh, or are we just saying, hey artists, here's this opportunity. Connect with them, figure it out, come back to us when you have an idea and we can maybe give you some money. I guess I wanna know what, how we wanna handle these situations going forward. Because these are all new and mm -hmm. don't, we don't exactly have a protocol. So you said that there are um, owners who are willing to donate their wall to this beautiful mural It's project? someone who, they don't own the wall, but they live across from it. Oh, okay. So they know the property <laughs> owner. It's kind of a... But the property owner, owner would be okay with lending their wall out to They've the spoken with the property owner already, and they've said that um, they're okay with it. On our website, could we advertise this and maybe be a competition that the owner and the groups would select, including the commission? That's an interesting idea. So it would be um, interesting in participating in public arts or interesting in donating a wall to public arts. And it, it would be just like contact information. And then we could at least make a, uh, a resource network for that's a, that's a, that's a good stuff. Right? Like advertising the opportunities, or yeah, yeah, making the uh, making available to the artists the locations that have been identified okay. as being canvases. Yeah. Or maybe we can even take a photo canvases. and put it up on the website with sure. that. I would yeah. say because he sent me photos. He's like, "This is the wall," and I'm yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. "Oh, so you want to put a mural up?" He's like, "I'm not artistic." <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, and now I have a wall, but not, not, I don't know what to do with this Which is now. interesting because I think that for some artists, it's finding the wall that might be the challenge. Mm -hmm. So you have a good match there on your website, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great idea. That's an idea I've kicked around before, too. Like, 
I've seen plenty of locations in the community. They might be private spaces, but there's an opportunity there to do public art. And maybe just creating a little spreadsheet or a database of opportunities, spaces. I think that would help as far as interaction, because it's one thing, like as an artist, I'd be like, oh, like, I have all these really great ideas, but where am I gonna go? Where am I gonna put it? But I think by having kind of that extra barrier, like, oh, there's already this list yeah. of places that I can just <laughs> pick from as far as where could, I want it. Could, could be on the website kind of like be a focal point where artists could come with ideas to pitch, mm -hmm. oh. and people could come to say we would yeah like you know well, the, the, the so that we could become kind of like a focal point of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the former would be the application. Uh, like you know maybe maybe it's uh, I used to saying that maybe if they have an idea usually it would just go into an application. They have an idea for an art piece and they write an application. Uh, but if it's just an idea would that be a different form then or what are you, what are you thinking about that? Well I'm thinking I mean an artist gets an idea, he pitches it, and he's not, he doesn't want to go through application if, if there's no interest in having it done, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Because maybe, uh, but if he, if he applies and we okay it, then that's... So is that a forum? Like, uh, kind of like a, we could create a forum on the website or something of just public art opportunities and ideas. And ideas. Um, and then they could be just kind of and, open source. Right, because if someone has a space, they might want to put it on, they'll put it on the website, but then they might also want to look at, if we have a collection and say, oh, I, I kind of like this, you kind of. Sure. That seems that seems like a good idea, just like a way to promote discussion. But we don't want to get it too cluttered with too right. many things. So, um, well, I think we would have to do some house cleaning, like after a month or two, whatever, we'd have to. Yeah. But like, when, when you go to the website, as an artist, it should be streamlined. Like, if you have an artist to, or if you have an idea to propose, like, it should be easy right. to find. Bam! I click it, and I can get my idea down. And all of a sudden, we're we're reviewing it. Um, you go to the website, and then you have like five different options. You know, that might might be a little. You know, is it is it absolutely Im imperative, and is it relevant that we have a forum for it? Maybe it is. No. Sure. I like the idea of, you know, up until now, the, the the way this has all been done is an artist has to have a finished product almost. Um, already set up, they've done all that work, and they bring it to us and we say, yeah, we'll fund it. And that's that. Or no, this is sort of like an opportunity, or no, we won't. And, and I don't know, this is kind of a, it gives us a different role where we can kind of help project along earlier on in that process, um, which I'm perfectly fine with. I mean, if that if the end result is there's more public art in the community, I mean, that's right. what we're here to do. Right. So I'm okay with doing a little bit of hand-holding. Maybe artists can come and present to the commission with a half-baked idea, and we can kind of have a little discussion back and forth on how we can help bring that project along. I'm open to that. Mm -hmm. Well, and like for uh, for both ends, if someone wants uh, has a space or uh, that they want filled, and someone who an artist has an idea, would we would they just put it right on the website, or do they do they? Well, they can send call. They can call Laura. They can send Laura. So this right now Laura isn't actively pursuing these right. avenues really and you know her time's valuable yep. and so we'd be uh, essentially paying her to play a role as a you know a, as a community outreach person like maybe just a little bit of that would, of her time would go towards that um, but so if we want to do that you got an idea they can call you anyways right your uniform is already up there so they, they, she's already doing that if someone has an idea right. Um, well, that's what I mean. Do we, do we want to make the website where they could just plop it in themselves? Yeah. I mean, the idea is to get so those ideas to our table with fewest impediments. Like, if right. they could just tell us their ideas, that'd be great, but we, we need to get their ideas to our table. So, uh, maybe uh, we need, I don't know, what do you think, Laura? What do you think your role should be? 
right now I feel very disconnected from the public art. I know that it's happening, and I know that we're helping make it happen. But all I'm seeing is paperwork. Which is it's killing my soul a little bit. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I, have that. No. I need to be more involved, mm -hmm. and I see this as a way for me to be more involved, I guess, and actually um, being more educated myself. Because right now I'm like, I don't know, maybe the building is available. Yeah. So I feel like I'm not doing my job well enough if I don't know. Um, I guess these connections or opportunities that are out there. And I think it helps artists. I mean, WPS project. We had a bunch of applicants for that. I think as soon as you post something that says artist opportunity, looking for artists, um, that already is inviting. Rather than, hey, do you have an idea? Let us know. Um, I don't think that has quite as strong of a call. So that's proactive? Yeah. So what, what, what do you see uh, some of your roles being then if we are going to, uh, you know, allow you to connect more with the artists directly and opportunities? I think as far as connecting with artists, we could probably have an email form, like what you said, kind of something on our website, um, something that they could just type out quick, hey, I have this idea, or I'm not an artist, but it would be awesome if we had something like this. Because um, there have been other people too, those factory buildings along the river. They want to see murals up there. Um, but knowing that people are interested in something like that, I think that would be able to spur me to help pursue those. Like, hey, someone's actively interested in having a mural up here. Is that something that we could do or not? Um, so I think having a form or something like that on the website inviting people to submit their ideas would be helpful. Um, and <coughs> maybe starting out since it's smaller, just having, I mean, I have one wall that I know of right now. I think that that's more than what we had a month ago. Um, even just having one project at a time, kind of scouting them out as they get filled up, then I could go out and find another one. Um, I don't know exactly what that would all entail, but right. I think to. there's just a, there's a gap between what happens here and what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what's what the opportunity that came to you? This person had a, uh, a he knew of a or she knew of a business owner who was uh, or a building owner who was potentially willing to use our wall, but you didn't feel like you could go out and contact that person at this point, but you'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I think we should allow that step to happen. Um, that would be like paying her to do that, to do some research and to, uh, you know, allow that communication to take place uh, while, you know, some other things are sitting on the back burner then. Um, and I understand if that's something that we don't want, like, we got a lot going on currently. Like, maybe this is something that is implemented little bit down the road or something but um. I think this is an opportunity it's like uh, because we're, we're, we're lagging on promotion so how do we right. leverage all these opportunities mm -hmm. to put our face out there uh, yeah. how do we get the public more involved so it's just developing that scheme and um, it'd be marketing our promotion our, our programs that would I would say, like, if you're inserting yourself into a, a, a potential art project, you are facilitating that project to happen. You are also sharing with artists and property owners, hey, these grants are available. So that's I feel like that's the struggle currently. I mean, like you said, kind of getting in on these projects without them being fully formed. Because right now I feel like I'm struggling, like you said, with promoting and stuff. On like a day-to-day -day social media, like, hey, like, this is what's happening. Not going to make a Facebook post about me writing up a contract. Um, so I think having more, 
more opportunities like this to say, look at this wall. Wouldn't this be fantastic to have something on here? What do you want to see up here? Could we make that a potential fundraiser, you know? Adopt the wall, you know? Uh, have the community pitch in, hey, for whatever amount of monies, we're going to put this mural up there, and it helps with our pot of money. I don't know. Potentially. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just uh, <coughs> but something. But neighborhood associations, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Neighborhood associations. Um, so, are, are we, would we like uh, Laura to play a more active role in connecting with artists and uh, discovering new potential public art opportunities? I say absolutely, because I mean, I think that's an even better way of getting our granddaughters out the door rather than just promoting it online with advertising. That only does so much, but if you're actually helping these projects come along and, and actually happen, um, then I think that does more for And you know, we just had presenters today, and they were from the university, right? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we tap those sources? I yeah, mean, I know. I've, I've been they, trying they, to. They, you know, they need to create a portfolio. Why don't Why don't we? Invite them to help us with our promotion to yeah. marketing. The, the, the students, well, yeah. The, yeah. Mr. Rory's class, uh, Professor Rory's class, I hate him. Uh, I, I've, I've gone to, the, they have com a competition uh, once a year with uh, uh, they, uh, one of those classes. They uh, design um, shelters for transit. And uh, they're all wonderful, and all the, all these presentations are all wonderful. But they don't have, they're missing the next step yeah. where they can start turning those things into reality. And I would really love to start working to making that step happen. Yeah, I mean they, they put a lot of work into it. A lot of them are, assi are assignment based. I mean, yeah, they're, they are. they're not necessarily supposed to take that next step. But some of them, like a few of these today, I yeah. can see you know having a formal proposal and a budget designed uh, be good practice for them, but it would also potentially bring us some cool things. Um, so I think we're all in agree with that uh, discussion with possible action. So what type of action could we take? Should we just... Uh, well, we want on, on our website, we... This, but this is about Laura connecting with, the uh, with, the with artists and public art opportunities. I'd say first step is to talk to the bid organization. I know DGBI already has placement opportunities that they're not sharing because they already mask where they could have potential artworks okay. and where you could be in Old Main and downtown. So, so you're not recreating the wheel and wasting time because your time is valuable. Talk to bid organizations and get on their same page and develop those re uh, relationships and partnerships. Mm -hmm. So um, we still need to take some action to Potentially put some put to put this into uh, Laura's job description, right. uh, connecting <coughs> to artists and with with and discovering new public art opportunities. So um, so we'd be adding this to your job description, which would be you know taking priority slightly off of some of the other things that you're working on. Uh, is that something you'd feel comfortable with? I guess, do you guys feel comfortable with this, or is this something that you would want to... Like, I think we all agree that it's a good idea. Is it a good idea that's right for now, or is it something that we should wait until our fundraising is set up for? Because fundraising is kind of a big thing happening. I think well, you're right. developing the relationships right now is critical, mm -hmm. and have, that brings awareness to what you're doing and what you're working for going forward. So I think that needs to happen. How you do that, okay. as far as the applic or the ideas and you know the website and things like that, that can all be developed once you have a solid idea of where you fit and what everyone else is doing. To put okay. Just gonna say real quick, you were there the most time at Artie Gras. A lot you went out and met a lot of the artists. They already kind of know your face pretty well, so it makes sense that they would already feel comfortable talking with you or Kent, but especially since it's your job. But they already identify you as their contact person, you know? I was going to say the same thing, you know, uh, just to, to put a face to the organization. Yeah. That makes sense. I, you know, it doesn't, uh, this would just be in your job description that this is uh, so another role that you're going to take on. We're not 
allocating a certain percentage of your time to be spent on it, you make that decision. And so if it's like a little bit more on the front end or whatever, however it works out where you see the opportunities, that's your interpretation, I think. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Well, how do we want to frame the motion? Um, and it'll be a motion to add to Laura's job description to uh, play an active role in connecting with our artists and discovering new public art opportunities. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, very good. Um, informational. So we have civic clerk meeting software training update, which is uh, the tablets right now. Yeah. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Mike Ronick, IT Director for the City. Uh, we've been rolling this out for probably the past month. Um, finally run into your meeting. Um, we could have a training session after this uh, meeting, or we could schedule one. Um, we pay uh, for a transcriptionist to put these meetings into uh, a closed captioning format. So why pay for the training session to be included in there? So sure. it could be after this, I could log you into the site and give you, show you a three or four minute, six minute video, and then uh, um, we can start voting next, uh, next sure. meeting if you like. Let's do that. Okay, all right, sure. Okay, um, so next, number two, chairman's report and project updates. Um, I, <laughs> so we had a discussion with our uh, fundraising cabinet. We've had two meetings so far, and uh, they've been pretty good. Um, so do you, should I just bring it up or accept? Okay, so we'll just talk about and, it. And who's at it? So right now we have Johanna. Uh, what's John's last name? Winters uh, Boys and Girls Club, and Kim Pigeon Metzner, who uh, used to be with the Art Garage. Now she has a consulting business uh, for the arts, um, and then Jason Jilg, who um, is a business owner guy, and uh, he came to us a while ago, and he hasn't actually attended a meeting yet because we've crossed paths. Uh, We've, we've missed each other. And then Wendy Townsend with the city, uh, who also hasn't been able to attend one of our meetings that we've been, we had two so far. And uh, every other week we've been getting together. And um, I would say that the main issue that we're trying to develop right now is broadening our membership. So we have five committed people, and we need to have like eight or 10. Um, to have a real robust fundraising cabinet. The ideas that we've come up with have been really good. Um, we have a lot of great ideas for how we can uh, start developing a, a big ask, like what we have to do to start creating relationships. Um, one of the things that I think we've taken away is our, our timeline might need to be reevaluated. So we have a three month period that I think starts like this month or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is next month, okay, so. Well, next week. They'll next be week. hitting the ground starting in June. Yeah. They're starting to go out and make those connections and stuff in May. So we had a three month uh, time frame in which we hoped to raise $300,000. We're, we're seeming, we're, we're feeling like that maybe is a little bit out of our scope. So what we discussed, um, and this isn't, you know, we hadn't, made a motion. We haven't really made motions. So it's still we're still pretty new in like how do we we haven't created officers yet because we haven't had enough people to find a chair or, or and then a vice chair. So um, but we're thinking like maybe we should pare down the ask amount to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and look at a two year period. That's an idea we're throwing around. Um, because we haven't really made those relationships with the big donors around that usually it takes a few years to make where you're like talking about how great the Green Bay Public Arts Commission is to you know the rich families and rich businesses and people who love the arts and you're you're trying to make a, a strong argument for why they should give us money uh, but we really don't have a huge amount of things in our portfolio yet so um, if we pare down that ask we might I think it's, it, it will be a little bit more doable for us. What else would you say? I mean, that's pretty much it. The only thing it might change if we do get more of those cabinet members. Mm -hmm. 
they know more of those stronger connections. But I think our main focus right now is getting more people on that cabinet because I don't know enough rich people. I don't know <laughs> any rich people. <laughs> <laughs> right. So have you figured out who else to get on? Or no. Like uh, we're they, they have a few ideas um, and we're hoping that Wendy and Jason, who haven't showed up at our meetings yet, will have some ideas. But if you guys have ideas, uh, I don't know any rich people. Well, actually, you know, this is for board members at this point. Right, 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 right. Your I position. know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Rich people see me, they walk away. They know I'm <laughs> going. Yeah. So we're looking for board members, so people who might know rich people or uh, rich yeah. organizations or, or donating organizations. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to say names on right. 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 Okay. Right. But if you if you think of any of them, let us know. Or right. you know, pursue them yourself yeah. if you want, and uh, we could come with you or have a meeting. But we need more members on our fundraising again. And I'm wondering, yeah, oh, go ahead. Un unlikely partners. Uh, you know, we let's look at our industry. We have the paper industry. We have the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. you, you don't tend to think we should approach them, but mm. I'm wondering if they're mm. unlikely partners. Yeah. yeah. Um, for for your 150 goal, is that all just through donations, or is there grants and foundations, or what kind of that would be resources? It would be grants, donations, okay. foundations, everything. And we don't even know what grants we're eligible for yet at this point. We don't have a list started, uh, which is something we should probably start doing, but um, that's for everything. Yeah. So, um, if you guys think of people that might work on our cabinet, uh, please let us know or reach out to them. See if they're interested. Uh, that's like priority for all for the GBPAC right now is getting this fundraising cabinet robust so that we can uh, do greater things and make her position permanent and. Get giant sculptures and get giant performances on the city deck. So um, that's all I have for my report. Uh, just to wrap things up here, because mm -hmm. long meeting today. Um, last week I submitted the application for the Bloomberg uh, Public Arts grant. I don't know exactly when we'll hear back from that. Um, Congratulations. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got it in. Yeah, you yeah, did it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not super confident. That's all right. It's, it's experience. We apply. We yeah. apply. Very competitive oh, we did. nationwide, so international actually. Is That's huge. So, Congratulations. No, I thought we had a good idea, so. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yep. And maybe yeah. down the road, if this doesn't work out, we can touch back on it or something. Okay. So that one's out of the way. Um, I'm going to be focusing on that Green Bay Packers Foundation grant, and then I'll be giving you guys the application materials for that during our next meeting. Uh, also, there is a Greater Green Bay Community Foundation grant that uh, we could apply for the application, or I think the yeah, application deadline is twice a year. Uh, that'll be in July. Okay. I'm assuming I'll apply. Great. Good. Cool. Yes, okay. let's do that. Good. Yep. Um, so that's grants. Um, and then rotating arts program. I went out with Jamie yesterday, thanks to the lovely snow that kind of moved things back a little bit. Uh, we went out yesterday and we staked off six locations total. So we have six pads that are probably going to be poured within the next two weeks or oh, so. Yeah. Yay. I saw that on Facebook. Keep posting that stuff. Yep. Yeah, See, that's, that's the good. kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm actually doing something. That's I'm going huge. somewhere. That's yeah. huge. Um, so that was very exciting to have that happen. Uh, we have three artists currently, so we need three more artists. But I think that'll be helpful too, kind of saying, hey, look at this location. Mm -hmm. Want to put a sculpture up? Um, we, we have one more uh, that's probably going to be at our next meeting. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, contracts are, annual grant program contract just got finalized this past week which is nice. We're still working with the legal department and risk management for the rotating arts program. So that's kind of the only um, yeah. bump in the road right now as far as moving forward. Great. 
Okay, thank you. Um, should we adjourn before we have the presentation? Okay, uh, can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All right. All right. Now, I've seen this before, correct? <laughs> yes, you have, yeah. So, okay, it's up to you if you want to hang around. Um,